People are terrified of their tax liability throughout retirement, and in many instances, rightfully so. A Roth conversions can be a wonderful tool to help offset this, but there are many instances when a Roth conversion would actually do you more harm than good. In today's video, I'm gonna show you four instances where doing a Roth conversion would probably hurt you more than it would help you. Hey everybody, I'm James Canole, founder of Root Financial, and I'm here to teach you how to get the most out of life with your money. In today's video, I'm gonna show you when you shouldn't do a Roth conversion. There's so many videos, on my channel included, where we talk about the benefits of here's how much you can save, and this is why you should do it, and here's how you should do it. But today, I wanna to show you when you shouldn't, when should you not even consider doing a Roth conversion. Before we jump into why you shouldn't do a Roth conversion, let's quickly recap why you would. The main reason you would do a Roth conversion is you're in a lower tax bracket today than you will be in the future. For example, let's assume today you're in the 10% marginal federal tax bracket, and in the future, you know you're going to be in the 22% marginal tax bracket. Well, if you have a balance in your traditional IRA, and your option is I could take it out at a 10% bracket, or I could take it out in a 22% bracket, which am I gonna choose? Well, I wanna take it out in a 10% bracket. And ideally, I don't wanna just take it out to live on, I wanna take it out to convert it to a Roth so that all future growth is completely tax-free, so when I'm in a higher tax bracket, I'm pulling money out tax-free as opposed to paying taxes on it. That's the gist of why you should consider a Roth conversion. Now, here's four instances when you shouldn't consider a Roth conversion. Number one, probably the most obvious, is you'll be in a lower tax bracket in the future. Now, in many ways, we have no idea what taxes will be like in the future, but if we have a clear picture of your retirement and your goals and your spending needs, we can probably have a pretty good estimate. Let's look at an example of when you might spend less money in the future. Let's assume that you come to me and you say, James, you know what, I wanna retire age 65 in the first 10 years, I want to live large. I wanna to travel to Europe, I wanna take those exotic vacations, I wanna bring my friends and family along with me and I wanna pay for all of it. Well, you might need a lot of income to do that. What does a lot of income mean? It probably means that you're pulling a lot more money out of investments, which is probably going to raise your tax bracket. But then you say, you know what, James, at 75 and beyond, I'll still do stuff here and there, but probably not to the same extent. So my income will drop lower, which means the amount I draw from my portfolio will drop, which probably means my tax bracket will drop. What does that mean? It probably means that the first several years of retirement, you're gonna be in a higher tax bracket than you would be in the future. So again, the point of doing a Roth conversion is to say if you're in a lower tax bracket today, do the conversions to save yourself from having to pay at a later date. Well, this is the opposite scenario. You're in a higher tax bracket today, so let's not add conversions on top of that, which would just increase taxes in an already higher tax bracket. And travel is not the only factor that could impact this. What if you go into retirement with a mortgage? You say, okay, I have 10 years left on my mortgage, or I have five years left, or 15 years left, or whatever it is. Well, if you have a mortgage, again, you're probably pulling more money from your portfolio, which is probably driving your taxes up, but that's not gonna be the case forever. So you might be in a higher tax bracket to start as you're pulling more money to pay that mortgage, but once that mortgage is paid off, now your income can drop while you can still maintain the same lifestyle, but allows your taxable income to stay lower. Or maybe you go into retirement and you're still either supporting children, or maybe you're supporting parents. So it's not just your lifestyle that you're covering, but you're also supporting parents or you're supporting children. Well, that might drive your income up, which means you might be in a higher tax bracket the first several years than you would be later in retirement. So getting an understanding of what will your specific cash flow look like based upon your goals and the things you need to support. Travel, mortgage, family support, and so much more, that's gonna drive your tax bracket. So understanding what that looks like and understanding that you might be in a higher tax bracket to begin with probably means it doesn't make sense to do Roth conversions. Hey, real quick, if you're still watching, haven't yet subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button because there's more content just like this that I wanna make sure you don't miss. Now, the second reason it might make sense not to do a Roth conversion is your required minimum distribution is not projected to be an issue. Well, what does issue mean? What does it being an issue mean? It's very subjective. A better way of saying it is you're not gonna be required to take more money out of your IRA because of your required minimum distributions than you would already otherwise be taking to meet your income needs. Now this has less to do with how much you have in your portfolio and it has more to do with the composition of your portfolio. Let's look at an example of two people with a healthy portfolio balance. Let's assume you have two people. 
Both of them have $2 million in their portfolio. The first person, their entire $2 million is all inside of a pre-tax IRA. Let's assume this individual wants to live on $80,000 per year throughout retirement, and they have $60,000 per year coming in from Social Security between them and a spouse. Well, if 60,000 is coming from Social Security and they want 80, well, that difference of $20,000, that needs to come from their IRA. Well, that's great. If they're only taking 20,000 from their IRA and are taking 60,000 from Social Security, Based on the way Social Security is taxed and based upon a married filing jointly tax bracket, they're probably somewhere in the 10 to 12% marginal tax bracket. They're living on 80,000, life is good, they're happy. However, once they hit RMD age, so required minimum distribution age, which let's assume is age 75 for them, it's a different story. Based on a portfolio value of $2 million in an IRA, they're projected to have to take about $80,000 per year from their IRA, whether they want to or not. This is their required distribution. So now what you have is they still only need 80,000 per year, but 60,000 is coming from Social Security, and then another 80,000 per year is coming from their required distribution, and that 80,000 per year is growing every single year. Well, now for that year, they have $140,000 of income. 80,000 from the IRA, 60,000 from Social Security, this is pushing them up into the 22% tax bracket, and that may even continue to climb as their RMD gets greater and greater. So that's an example of where the RMD is an issue. It's requiring them to take more money from their IRA than they otherwise would have just to meet their income needs. What they need is 20,000, what they're required to take is 80,000, and that number is just gonna keep growing. Well, let's now compare the other individual who also has $2 million in their portfolio, but of that 2 million, only 200,000 is in a traditional IRA. The rest is in brokerage or Roth IRA accounts. Well, this individual also wants to live on 80,000 per year. This individual also has 60,000 per year coming in from social security for themselves and for a spouse. So they also need $20,000 per year to live on to supplement the gap between social security and their desired standard of living of 80,000 per year. Well, when they turn 75, when RMDs kick in, their required distribution, their required minimum distribution is only projected to be $8,000 per year. So if they need 20 from their portfolio, 8,000 comes from the required distribution, they're still taking another 12,000 on top of that. So for them, the required distribution is not an issue. It's less than the amount they're already planning to take from their portfolio, and it's not gonna force them to distribute an income amount that's gonna push them into a higher tax bracket and really force them to take more out of their portfolio than they really want to. So as we can see here, RMDs being an issue is less about your total portfolio balance, it's more about how much do you need from your portfolio how much of your portfolio is subject to RMDs, and what will that RMD be? Will it be greater than or less than the amount you actually need? So if you're looking at your projections and your required distributions are less than you actually think you're gonna need from your portfolio, it might not make sense to do Roth conversions because RMDs won't be an issue for you in the future. Now, as you're listening, I have four reasons outlined here. I'm gonna get to the next two in a second, but I'd love to hear from you too. What other reasons can you think of where doing a Roth conversion probably doesn't make much sense. Leave a comment below to let us all know. The third reason I have where doing a Roth conversion probably doesn't make a lot of sense is if you do a lot of charitable giving. Well, what on earth does that have to do with a Roth conversion? Charitable giving is what I do to a charity or to a church or to whatever. It has nothing to do with my IRA and Roth IRA, does it? Well, in fact, it has a lot to do with that. You see, there's a great planning technique called Qualified Charitable Distributions. You might see it abbreviated as QCDs. What a QCD allows you to do is as soon as you turn 70 and a half, you can gift up to 100,000 per year per spouse directly from your IRA to a charity of your choice. Why that matters is you don't have to pull the money out of your IRA, pay taxes on it, and then gift it. You just gift it directly from your IRA. What this means is you never pay any taxes on it, the charity gets the full deduction, and you get the benefit of still doing the giving, but not having to pay taxes as money's coming out of your IRA. So here's the planning point that you can take from this. I've had a lot of clients I've worked with, and they came to me with really wonderful strategies of here's how we're gonna do donor advised fund contributions and pair it with a Roth conversion and set up these qualified trusts, all of which made a lot of sense. But when I looked at it, 
I said, wouldn't a more simple and much more effective method be to instead of doing all this, just let the money keep growing in your traditional IRA? You say, well, the issue with that is when I hit RMD age, I'm gonna be forced to take all that money out and it's gonna be more than I really need and it's gonna force me into a higher tax bracket. He said, yes, until we consider qualified charitable distributions. What if we let that money keep growing tax-free? So we get the tax deduction on the way in, we get the tax deferred growth on the way up and on the way out, instead of us taking that income and it pushing us into a higher tax bracket, let's do all of our charitable giving from our IRA. And because we can each do $100,000 per year, so 100,000 for each spouse, so up to 200,000 per year, now adjusted for inflation, that's a really serious amount that you can gift without having to pay taxes on that money. So if you look at your projected RMD requirement, and if you look at how much you'd like to be able to give, and if there's some level of alignment there, or if your giving can at least offset some of the hit from the RMD, that may be a really effective strategy instead of paying taxes along the way from Roth conversions in hopes of not having to take as much out in the future. And then finally, the fourth reason I don't think it would make sense to do a Roth conversion is frankly, is if you don't have a very long life expectancy. Now you might be asking, what on earth does life expectancy have to do with the taxes I'm gonna pay? Well, with required minimum distributions, the two primary factors that determine how large that distribution has to be comes down to your pre-tax balance at the end of the prior year. So really how big is your account? How big is your IRA? And the second factor is your age. So the larger your IRA, the greater the required distribution is gonna be, but also the older you are, the greater that required distribution is going to be. For example, based upon current RMD tables, so IRS life expectancy tables, if you're age 75, your required distribution is somewhere around 4.1% of your IRA balance. So if you have a million dollar IRA, you'd be forced to distribute $41,000, I'm rounding here, but about $41,000 the following year to satisfy your RMD. Now, if you're age 90 and have a million dollars in your IRA, your required distribution amount is about 8.2% of your account balance. So now that million dollars, you're forced to distribute about 82,000 of it. So an extra 41,000, which could push you into a higher tax bracket. So when we're looking at RMDs, the initial amount you have to take out is a relatively low percentage of the account balance as a whole, but every single year you live longer, the required distribution as a percentage is growing. So if you're looking at this and you're saying, well, I don't really have a real long life expectancy. It might only be 76, 77, 78. Your required distribution is probably a little bit more manageable than someone who's saying, yeah, my parents lived till they were 100 and I might live to 100 too. At that point, your required distribution might be quite substantial. Now, one factor I'm leaving out of here is a lot of people when they're doing required distributions or when they're looking at Roth conversions, it's not just about their tax bracket when they're living. It's also about legacy provisions. It's also about understanding how to protect a surviving spouse. So I fully admit that it's probably just not your life expectancy that you might be looking at. But if you don't have a long life expectancy, these required distributions might not become as big of an issue as some people are concerned they might become over time. So those are four reasons when it actually might make sense not to do a Roth conversion. Now, if you're watching this video, I'm saying, hey, those four reasons don't really apply to me. I think I do need a Roth conversion, but you're not really sure where to start. Well, be sure to check out this video here where I walk you through just that. Once again, I'm James Knoll, founder of Root Financial. And if you're interested in seeing how we help our clients at Root Financial get the most out of life with their money, be sure to visit us at www.rootfinancialpartners.com.